guys, it's Lynn again. So we're going to tackle some calculus in this video. This will be from a Calculus 2 class involving some integrals and finding volume. Now, in this particular volume problem, it's going to read something like find the volume of a solid whose base is a circle of radius 4 with equilateral triangle cross sections, okay? Using, and it'll say something like the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis or something like that. But what I wanna draw your attention to is you're finding volume of a solid with some type of base using cross sections. So the key word here is cross section, okay? As soon as you see that phrase cross section when you're finding a volume, you're, you're immediately going to set up an integral and you're gonna take the integral of the area of the cross section. So I'm gonna write that down first. Area of the cross section. Now, in this particular problem, they want your cross sections to be equilateral triangles. So you have to go back and remember how to find the area of an equilateral triangle. So let me write that out. I'm gonna draw it like this. That's my little equilateral triangle symbol. Now, look this up. If you need to look up this formula, that's okay. Completely understandable. But the area of an equilateral triangle is the square root of three over four times the side length squared. So all three sides are the same. So just times thus one of the side lengths squared. I'm gonna use B squared for base because we're used to that word uh, when we're de dealing with area of a triangle. So square root of three over four times the base squared, okay, is your area of an equilateral triangle. So now we know that we are going to have the integral of the square root of three over four b squared. Now that's a good starting point. Now we have to take into consideration the base of this solid. They're saying it's a circle with radius four. So I'm gonna draw that out on a graph. So that is the floor, that's the base of my solid. So that's like the floor of the solid, right? So then what we're gonna have is we have these cross sections that are equilateral triangles. So if you can imagine, the, the base of the triangle is gonna lie across the circle and then the triangles are gonna come out at you three-dimensionally like that. If you can visualize that, it's kind of hard to imagine. But so there's one of your cross sections, another cross section you'll have down here, let's say, these triangles are coming up at you three-dimensionally, okay? So those are your cross sections that you're gonna be basically adding up an infinite number of, okay? So the way we're gonna do this, now we have to represent this B, which is the base of that triangle right here, goes from here to here. Over This one goes from the top of the circle to the bottom of the circle. We have to represent that base in terms of X. So in terms of the graph of this equation or the function of this circle, if that makes sense. So we, I'm just gonna make it easy on us and just take the semicircle which the equation of a semicircle is going to be the square root of the radius squared, so 16, because the radius is four, minus x squared. And we get that because the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals four squared, okay? So you gotta remember those the uh, equation of a circle as well for this. So. We translate this, solve it for y, and we get the equation for the semicircle as the square root of 16 minus x squared. Now, if this makes sense to you, this distance b is always going to be two times that because this y value is representing the top semicircle. So that's the distance from the x-axis to the top of the circle. Well, we also have the x-axis to the bottom of the circle, which is gonna be the same distance, right? So the B base, that bottom of that triangle, is actually going to be two times the square root of 16 minus x squared, 
okay? So we represented this base of the triangle in terms of x, in terms of the function, okay? Which is the equation of the circle in this case. Now, we've done most of the work. Now we just have to plug this b expression in for this b and then evaluate the integral. So we're going to say, let's divide this up. We're going to have the integral of the square root of 3 over 4. Now b is 2 radical 16 minus x squared. Now that whole thing is squared, right? So this 2 out in front squared, square root of 3, the 2 out in front squared becomes a 4. The radical 16 minus x squared squared, the radical just goes away. So that becomes just plain old 16 minus x squared. Okay, so far so good. And then, I might come over this way here. Now we can simplify a little bit. These 4s are going to cancel. Then this constant, the square root of 3, can come out in front of the integral. So I got the square root of 3 integral. Then I just have 16 minus x squared after the integration symbol. Okay, so far so good. Now the only thing we have left to do is find these bounds. These bounds are going to be the area that we're integrating over. So from left to right, we're going the x values, we're going from negative 4 to positive 4. Those are your those are your bounds for your for your integral. That's going to be the integral that you go on from and you solve. I believe, um, so integration, square root of 3 just sits there, but that's going to be 16x minus x cubed over 3. Then you plug in the 4 and the negative 4 and so on and so forth. So I'm going to let you do the integration and basically just the arithmetic, but that's the setup. I wanted to hit the cross-section volumes because they're a different kind of breed of volume. If you see the word cross-sections, first thing you do, integral of the area of the cross-section. In this case, it was an equilateral triangle formula that you had to plug in there represent the base of the triangle in terms of x, plug that in, simplify, and then integrate. So hopefully that makes sense. Leave some comments if you have questions. Thanks.